marks our final session in the soft skills series and we'll look at creativity and innovation. So we're delighted to be welcoming back Monica. Monica is CEO and co-founder of Reach Outstanding and so delighted to have her back today. Um, this session will be recorded and will be made available to watch on demand. I'll post the link to where you can find that video in the coming days after this session. Um, also, just a reminder to everyone um, to please just feel it free to get involved in the Q&A today. So the chat is enabled for everyone and um, you won't be able to come off mute, but any questions that you do have, feel free to pop them in and we'll be keeping an eye on those throughout. Just quickly then on our code of conduct, hopefully you can all see it on the screen. So this is just a reminder to everyone today that um, this is an inclusive environment. So just to be aware of everyone who's with us today, um, if we do see any differences of opinions or anything like that in the chat, just to be understanding of, um, of those opinions and of everyone who's here today. So without that, um, without uh, going any further, Monica, I'll hand over to you and stop sharing my screen. Wonderful. Thank you so much for the introduction and welcome everyone today. If you just bear with me, I'm going to share my screen. Please let me know if you can see my screen. Can uh, you see my screen? If just someone gives me a thumbs up or perfect. Thank you so much. So it's wonderful to have you here today and um, on this final session on the soft skills training. And today we're going to be talking about creativity and innovation, just like the other sessions we've had in the past. Um, please make this as interactive as you wish. Um, use the chat functionality to ask questions. And also throughout the session, I will be asking for your insights, your experiences. So please feel free to um, provide those answers in the chat facility as well. So creativity and innovation. Um, one of the things which 2020 showed was that a lot of organizations went through a really difficult time. And there were many organizations who were able to adapt, were able to rebrand and um, change the services that they were offering to their clients in a way which enabled them to get through the pandemic period through in a positive way. And a lot of that was around how they were being innovative, how they were being creative in the way that they operated, maybe the way that they ran their processes, all the way through to the new products and services that they were able to bring to the market. And um, this is something which um, when I when I look at how organizations have evolved in 2020, then I really feel that they have been creative in their approach and those success stories have been really, really amazing. So what are the things we're going to be talking about today? So today we're going to talk about um, the creative process because creativity is a process. It's not a one off thing that we do and then that's it. So this is a process. And as part of that process, we have creative people as well and we are all creative in our own ways and we'll talk more about that in today's session then we'll look at the way in which creativity and innovation go hand in hand how the two are related and how creativity um, is an is an enabler for innovation as well We'll talk about the innovation process and some of the key steps that um, any individual organization or business can implement in the work that they do. Then we'll look at some of those things which organizations and entrepreneurs can do um, to drive that culture, to, to drive that um, mindset and approach when it comes to creativity and innovation. And then finally, we will look at how do we foster that within companies. So without further ado, the first thing I wanted to share with you was um, a quote by Thomas Edison. 
and um, it's this the value of an idea lies in the using of it so I can imagine we've all had many ideas right now while we're on this call there may be an idea that's come to your mind and it's taking that idea and turning it into something taking those action steps and um, being innovative and creating an, an invention which is where that idea has the value because otherwise that idea stays in our mind as it is. It's a concept, it's an idea. So um, that's something that I, I believe that is really um, a really key thing to consider and be aware of. So let's get interactive straight away. Um, um, the first question that I would like for you to reflect upon is, when you think of a creative idea or product, what kinds of things come to your mind? Please use the chat box, share your, share your thoughts on this one. It could be a product or service. It could be the way that you operate in the workplace. What kind of ideas come to your mind? So while um, people are um, putting their answers in the chat, some of the things that um, um, a, a lot of people in the previous sessions have said is it could be a new technology, it could be um, a new application which resolves a specific uh, situation or, or a specific scenario. Um, so we're getting some answers through. So we've got um, software to simplify processes, business opportunities, filling the gap. And that's something we're going to be talking about in today's session, using collaborative tools to um, explore new ideas and um, doing things differently um, could be a way to do things better. Um, changing communication methods such as stand up meetings. Um, great, really good. Less emails as well. So um, like some really great um, feedback and, and comments in the chat box on that. So as you can see, it's different things. It can be internal of in an organization. It can be external. It could be something industry specific or even um, country or location specific. So thanks for sharing those. Um, and the next question, so just type yes or no. Do you think creativity can be learnt? What are your thoughts? Yes. Getting a few yeses coming through. Well, brilliant. Thanks for sharing your thoughts. And um, creativity, as I mentioned at the start of today's session, is that we are all creative in our own ways based on our experiences, based on um, the, the work that we do, based on um, uh, who we are and our passions and our interests. So being um, creative, it does lie within each of us and it's um, how we take that forward and how we bring that out. So let's explore those elements in greater detail. So creative thinking um, is the underlying element of being creative. So let's really explore what that means and, um, and delve into that a little bit further. So creativity is the ability to transcend traditional ways of thinking or acting and to develop new and original ideas, methods or objectives. So looking at the things and the answers you gave in the chat box, you gave ideas, you gave methods and you actually provided objects as well. So um, and, and that's what we do when we go through a creative process. And then when we expand on that further, creative thinking is the process of nurturing your imagination, allowing you to think out of the box. So often we hear people say, um, why don't you think out of the box? Um, I would like you to think differently about this. And we, we hear this term a lot, thinking out of the box. And, um, and, and in essence, that means look at things from a different perspective, take a different view um, and um, like move away from traditional ways of um, tackling a, a scenario or a situation or a challenge. And we are all different and we bring those ideas and that, that's the amazing thing about being creative. You can have a group of people together and everyone can bring their own ideas and it's then how do you take that idea to then um, evolve into something which um, becomes a final product or service. Um, the image I've used here is of um, a, a, young, a young kid and there's lots of buildings in the background 
And I live in the UAE and um, in the UAE, we have the Burj Khalifa and the Burj Khalifa is one of the tallest buildings in the world. And before it became the tallest building in the world, it was someone's idea. It was someone's vision. It was almost for them that we have a dream or a desire to create this building so then what did they do? They went through a process. They um, they followed the key steps of what that idea was and actually turning it into a final product. And then after years and years and however long it took for them to um, build that final building, it's now become a world icon from a building perspective. So that just demonstrates that when we have an idea, when we have a vision, by taking the actionable steps, we can actually turn it into something which um, is what we know um, about the Burj Khalifa today. Now, um, I mentioned earlier that the creative process isn't a one-off activity and uh, being creative um, is more than having a single conversation and then believing or imagining that um, that's all that's required. And James Clear has put it really nicely. And he is saying that creativity is a process, not an event. And um, so let's look at this process. Here's a process I'm going to share with you. It's created by Graham Wallace, and he identifies four stages of the creative process. Now, um, it could be that some of these things you're doing already in the role and the jobs you have, or you you could be doing bits of it and it may be that there's something that you're thinking of delivering or creating and this model could be beneficial for you so let's go through each of the different elements so the first one is about preparation and this is that period of um, idea generation um, looking at what situation or what scenario or what problem we're trying to improve and um, then it's looking at where those sources of inspiration actually come from how can we um, bring our ideas together and um, think about um, how we can um, find a solution for that scenario or situation and it's it's following it in a two-pronged approach it's looking internally so within our organization what other ideas what are we doing right now that can be improved again someone in the chat talked about improving internal processes so again we can look at how are our internal processes being undertaken and then how can we improve them could a 10-step process be reduced to seven steps and then that could lead to greater efficiencies all the way through to what are those things that are happening in the external um, world um, I'll give you an example in one of our um, we we do coaching as part of the organization that um, I run and um, we're coaching specific leaders in, in, across the world and one of the things that they wanted to do is they wanted to become self-sufficient in their country by using the crops that they produce in a way which um, enable them to um, create an idea to the market that makes their crops come across as being really like a superfood. So um, they took something that they create and that they grow and then they went through this process of idea generation really thinking about what they can do and how they can change things and now that idea is being taken to the united nations so it just shows that um by taking a step back and really thinking about things um, and generating those ideas and being creative can really lead to um, shifts and actual large-scale change as well so we have that preparation approach. So once the preparation happens, then we have that incubation and that incubation as the idea, as the name goes, it's very much about allowing those ideas to a mulch in the mind, really allowing them to marinate and to develop. And it's sometimes it's about creating space. So you have an idea, you've thought about it, and then you give yourself that space between coming up with our idea and, and really turning it to the next step. And, and this could be where we spend time on our own or we may go for a walk or we may do something completely different to take our minds away from that idea and then suddenly um, those ideas start to evolve and they start to um, generate and grow in our in our minds and that's really the incubation process and then once the incubation process happens suddenly 
we may be on that walk or we may be on a call or we may be working on something completely different. And then that light bulb moment happens. We have that aha moment because those ideas that we created in the first two phases, suddenly everything's just come together in a way which you now are, are really clear about what that idea is and what that product or service is going to be. And um so I've said, I've written on here that it can be anything from a phone application, it can be um, a business provide, finding solutions, all the way through to the world scenario, which I just spoke about with regards to um, coming up with that crop and taking it to the United Nations. And this is where we probably get really excited because um, that light bulb has gone off and then suddenly we want to speak about it and we want to share those ideas and we want to take those action steps. So when we're at that stage, then we start doing the final process, which is the verification. And the verification is when that idea that's now um, really clear in the mind, it's now becoming, it's now really turned into something which we have to take some action steps to evolve and to really turn it into something. So it could be um, you take, you make some effort to formalize that idea. It could be that um, something is written down or there are some sessions which happen to further discuss these ideas all the way through to creating um, a prototype or um, doing a pilot of something. So um, and, and this is where um, it's very much about having those discussions and really um, working with other people to to come up with what needs to happen next and i'm just going to go to the chat and tanya has said usually ideas are formulated in conversations with others absolutely um when we are in um this kind of process and when we are going through that um creative process um, it is about people coming together and people working on that idea or um, on that product or service that they want to create to resolve a specific scenario so often this is not done in isolation it is done as part of a group and that's why in the verification process we are working as a team to get to that final stage um, and it, it may also be that the prototype is created or the pilot study has been done and then it goes through a process of review of new iterations and um, changes as well so very much taking an agile approach so an example I can give you for, for this is um, um, a few years ago, I was working for one of the, the global banks and there was a project I was working on. And in this project, the organization were not keen to take um, such a big leap of faith to deliver a project when they didn't have any evidence internally of how it would work. And um, and then through a number of discussions and, and a number of um, sessions to come up with different ideas, we decided to do a prototype and um, we did a pilot in, in in essence and when that pilot was successful because it was a small group of people and it was a small number of processes um, eventually when that worked then they were more comfortable about taking that final solution forward for the rest of the organization so in real life these are things that would happen um, within companies please feel free to ask any questions in the chat um, um, as we're going along as well it's time for us to do a mini exercise. So I've got my mobile phone here. And what I would like for you to think about is you're given a product to showcase in a new and unique way. So we all know that a mobile phone ultimately is used for communication. What I would like for you to do and for you to share in the chat functionality is that how else could you creatively um, sell a phone? What other features could you um, really showcase to, to someone that you were trying to sell um, a phone to? Spend some time thinking of um, the features of the product and then share your answers in the chat. I'll give you a few moments to do this. I can see some people typing. And so while you're typing, and I'll, I'll keep an eye on, on your answers, so some of the things that we've had on our previous sessions is some of them were, um, it's a gallery, um, it's a 
communication tool or um, a document management system or a shopping list. So these are some of the things that people have um, shared in previous sessions um, all the way through to it's um, something which it enables people to um, do things such as um, put their makeup on or as someone has said here, I a mirror. So these are the sorts of things that um, when we do think about uh, outside of the box when it comes to a product or a service it's just looking at all those other features that something has because that gives you a new perspective and that also changes the way that something is marketed to the general public as well or to people within your organization so we've got a diary we've got uh, games augmented augmented reality games and group gaming so it just shows how far um the the mobile phone has gone and how it's being used and um, that's because someone was actually creatively thinking about what else could be done and how it could be leveraged to then um, deliver a, a new product or service so for example when it comes to um, a plant you can use an app and you can take a photo of a plant and it tells you if the plant needs water or sunlight or fertilizer and things like that and for any plant enthusiast that's like an amazing thing we've got a newspaper we've got a navigation system okay great wonderful answers there guys um let's look at the innovation process so um the harvard business review um there was an article and um about in innovation and um what they've said is in reality for innovation to contribute to a com company or a government agency it needs to be designed as a process from start to deployment and um, quite similar to um, the creative process the innovation process um, has a number of stages and we will go through them in, in this section um, before we go any further I want to do talk about in, uh, invention and innovation and the differences between them and and why it's important to have that clarity as well so um, invention can be defined as the creation of a product or introduction, introduction of a process for the first time. Innovation, on the other hand, occurs if someone improves or makes significant contribution to, to an existing product process or service. So, for example, um, a lot of the things that we use today that we take for granted at some point, they were an invention, yet other people came along, they improved it, they added more features, um, and then eventually it was commercialized and then it became a, 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 an innovation for people to then use and it was taken to market as well. And um, so if we just explore um, this a little bit further, um, what the studies have found is, and there's a link here to a study by Northeastern University, um, any any of the links um, can be shared as well with you if, you, if you're willing or interested in um, reading up about um, the information contained in these slides. So what this study found was that organizations really have a desire to be innovative. In fact, 79% of organizations interviewed as part of the survey saw innovation as the top three um, key strategic elements of their organization. Yet the statistics show something different. Statistics show that 40% of new products and services fail. And um, what this article says and what the study and the research says is the reason for this is that we don't have a process and that the innovation process becomes really key. So following on from the process we've already talked about when it comes to creativity, the innovation process is very much about um, identifying the discovery phase and um, it's about identifying the problem, creating those ideas, doing design thinking, and design thinking is getting a lot of attention right now. I mean, there are so many courses available on, on design thinking because people realize that how important it is to do things differently and to take a different approach. It's looking at the pain points um, that an organization or a team or an industry is um, facing and then looking at ways in which we can resolve those situations or those challenges. And then once we've 
gone through that discovery phase. It's really about the development phase. Now, the development phase is about building that product or service, going out and looking for some funding or some investment to enable what was um, that initial idea and taking it into a final product or service. And um, when it gets to the development stage, this is where um, the funding is needed because um, it may require suppliers coming on board, customers coming on board, um, different experts being hired to move that um, discovery to the next stage. And it's also about um, gathering feedback as well from, from experts on what can be improved and what can be changed. Um, often I think about beta websites um, um, when we, we talk about the innovation process because those beta websites are always open for feedback and um, it's that learning process and, and that, that's what we do in the development stage. So once we've got through to the development stage, we've got um, a product which is um, a minimal viable product or a product which we believe can be taken to um, market with if we're going to sell it as a, a product to the customers or if we're going to implement it internally within a company, then we go through that commercialization or that implementation phase. And um, this then becomes a, a continuous process of um, improving, changing, and taking on board customer needs and requirements. Um, and this is where the intention is for the product to generate an income, um, because in essence, it's become um, a commercialized product as well. I'm just going to look at the chat to see um, what comments are being shared. There may be a desire to be innovative, but most companies are dead scared of failure and individual blame. Absolutely. And we're going to be talking about this a little bit later when it comes to how do we foster that culture of innovation and creativity and how do we move away from the blame game and looking at more looking at things in the way that how do we learn? Um, if we look at um, something going wrong as a learning experience rather than a blaming experience, then we can actually shift the way that we look at innovation and creativity. Can you please share the link to the article? Yep, yeah, absolutely. We can we can get that shared as well. So that's the innovation process. Um, and then the, the next thing is around thinking creatively drives innovation and growth. And this is the, the, the thing to remember here is that the two things don't happen in isolation. And um, many organizations actually hire creative experts or SMEs to come in and, and be part of that, um, of that pro process because um, they think in that way. And it's actually um, how they are in, in essence programmed to think. So um, they're able to get those ideas, translate those ideas, and also bring those ideas out of other people who are part of the team. And uh, another quote here by Albert Einstein, we can not solve our problems with the same level of thinking that created them. And, and that's the point here is that actually um, what got us to the situation isn't what's going to get us out of here. And there's a great book by Marshall Goldsmith, which is called What Got Us Here Won't Get Us There. And it, it, and it echoes the same thing that we've, we've got to this specific point by all the things that we've done so far to move forward and to resolve off, we need to take a different approach. Um, and that's what we'll look at next. Um, so some more um, questions coming your way. So let's let's reflect on the next um, couple of questions. Uh, what do you think are some of the business benefits of thinking creatively? I'll give you a few moments and let you um, put the answers in the chat. being relevant. Okay, great. People can feel empowered. Excellent. Competitive edge. So some really good answers, brand awareness. Absolutely. So some really good answers. And, and these are all things that are um, really relevant and really key. Expansion, customer experience has improved, of course, because if we're um, thinking differently and we're thinking about the perspective of a customer, then we can actually um, create a very different product or service for them. More efficient solutions, new products and services equals new clients, increased client happiness. Very nice. The proposals you made are not usable and have to wait some years for other companies to try them. 
the kind of words that made me leave my job and go somewhere better. Okay, so um, that's um, a, a really interesting point as well, Daf. So um, it's about our experiences and, and knowing um, which organisations are willing to drive that culture forward as well. Um, and then the second question is, what creative things have you done over the last few months? It could be anything from the way you've done something at work or some ideas that have come to your mind or how you've resolved um, a, a challenge or a scenario. So let's spend a few moments looking at that. And while you're writing your answers in the box, building the community, okay, great. Wonderful. Keep the answers coming. Um, I, I love, I'm loving reading um, the great responses that are coming through. Um, some of the things that I've done is um, the way that um, we're leveraging technology in the services that um, we deliver, because prior to 2020, our work was primarily face to face um, when it came to training programs and things like that. So now um, technology has become such a fundamental part of the way that I operate and the way that I deliver coaching and training. So I've had to be creative in the way that I've done that, primarily to make things more interesting and, and more exciting for the end user as well. Um, developing a power platform for user access requests for a particular piece of software. OK, great. Wonderful. So all good things. And um, hopefully um, after today's session, you know, you spend more time um, with that um, creative hat on and, and, and think of other things that you can do as well, which are, are relevant for you. So um, earlier I mentioned um, thinking out of the box as a phrase that we often um, that's often used when it comes to creativity, um, and there's a, there's another um, phrase that um, I've I've heard a lot in my career over the last twenty years, and that's that think of the solution creatively. Like what does that even mean? So um, I remember working for um, a leader who um, often never wanted to hear about the problem. So if we went into uh, have a meeting with them and we explained, oh, this is not working, or this person hasn't done this, or um, this has gone wrong because this team failed to do the thing they were responsible for. So the way this leader um, communicated to us is that, okay, what I don't want, I don't want to hear about the problem. What you can do is come to me with a solution to the situation that's going on right now. So it was very much about a mindset shift. And what this leader did was um, they actually were able to generate this culture of being solution driven within their teams and eventually within their departments. So even today, people still remember this leader because of the start they took about problems and, and solutions and it's been really um, it's been something that I still take with me when I when I work with different clients and, and the work I do um, as well so what are some of those things that we can do to think differently and um, think about solutions in a in a creative way um, so some of the things that we can do is we could change our perspective when we look at processes how can we improve um, a process if you work in regardless of the different teams and departments you work in you may notice that the way something is being done may be inefficient and by looking at it differently you could actually create an efficiency and change that process finding um, a solution to a gap in the market and someone already put um, a, a comment like that in the chat um, earlier in the session improving the way things are done um, looking uh, for present and future solutions so when we are thinking about innovation often sometimes innovations are resource intensive they can take a little bit of time so that means that rather than looking at what the world looks like today like being forward looking about how it could look in the future so that we're prepared for other scenarios and situations as well um, how we engage with customers. And I've got a really good example to use um, with this. So I'm working with a client who works for a very high end luxury brand. And um, when the 2020 pandemic um, happened, um, this brand, like many other retail outlets, um, they had to close their doors to the general public. Yet they had people contacting them from all over the world wanting to know more about their products. So they had to leverage to technology in a way that they were not used to. So they would have regular calls using um, 
uh, video conferencing um, tools to engage with the customer. Um, they had to bring in experts on a specific product to almost do um, a mini sales pitch to the customer or the client about a specific bag or a specific item of jewelry, all the way through to using augmented reality to see how would that um, handbag look on someone's arm to all the way to um, how would that wallet look and, and things like that. And by leveraging technology in a way, in, in the way that they engage with their customers, they were able to be really, really successful. And in fact, their sales were really, really good in 2020 because they shifted how they engage with their customers and which for them, they're very happy and they're pleased about as well. And then the last one here is how we actually work with our suppliers. How can we make that supply chain efficient? What are some of those things that we can do with our customer, uh, our suppliers as well? So these are some of the things that when we want to look for solutions and we want to take a different approach um, to how we deal with various scenarios and challenges, it's being more solution focused and, and um, bringing that to the table as a piece of discussion as well. So creativity and innovation go hand in hand, and we've we've um, we've touched upon this already. And it's like by encouraging a creative approach within the workplace, those ideas are generated, solutions are created, and innovation emerges. So it's all about having that right setting. Um, so because we're not in the workplace right. Now, so a lot of us are um, still leveraging technology. Um, it may be a hybrid model, yet we are still leveraging technology. So how can we use Teams in a way which enables us to be more creative, that enables those ideas to happen? And um, those are some of the different things that we can start thinking about and start to do um, as well, because until we go back into the offices in 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 the new way that we are going to in the future, um, we have to leverage the tools that are available with us to us. Um, so when when this is done well, when that environment and that collaborative setting is in place, then really the benefits to an organization can be vast. So let's look at some of those benefits already. So we've got problem solving. Um, a great benefit. We've got the competitive edge and someone already mentioned that in today's chat. Um, we're adding value, we're adding value um, in various levels of an organization internally and externally. Um, we're creating an, an environment for new thoughts and ideas. We're bringing out new talent. So when we are in a creative setting, um, it's about giving other people that platform, um, that opportunity to really express and to share their ideas and then building upon those ideas. Um, it's, it's probably better to have like uh, many ideas than having no ideas and then really um, seeing how we can get the best of those ideas that are available. Um, it offers variety of solutions. It breeds innovation, so it really drives that culture of innovation and coming up with new things. Um, it enables business growth, which is what we've also had in the chat today. It helps resolve challenges, um, improves the way that things are done. Again, when we were talking about the processes and really improving processes within organizations, it helps that as well. It drives collaboration. And if anyone was in the last module that I ran on teamwork and collaboration, then innovation and creativity and teamwork and collaboration go hand in hand because um, it's about people coming together and sharing, expressing, doing design thinking as well. And then ultimately, we will have efficiencies in the way that we do things, whether that's going to market with a new product or service or improving the ways that we do things internally. So those are the benefits to an organization. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a mini case example to illustrate an organization which um, uh, has been rated as in a top 50 company by Fast Company based on its journey of success. So um, it's um, 
it's an online exercise company. It's a company which um, many of us of us will know. Um, it's Peloton, and it's moved from uh, exercise equipment company to very much a technology company. And um, how have they done that? They've used innovation and creativity in the way that they engage with their customers and the way that they um, offer um, new experiences and new services. So through content videos, through those live classes that they offer their clients as well. And um, what they're doing is they're giving that fitness experience to people. And especially during 2020, there was the demand for such services and such products um, rocketed because people were not able to go outside they were not able to have those experiences so they brought that experience into people's homes by using technology and to take that further what they've done is they've um, been even more creative by creating influencers and the teachers and the trainers that they have who are now famous and have like thousands if not um, hundreds and thousands of followers so this is an example of um, uh, where a company has moved from um, a product offering all the way through to providing an experience that their customers have wanted and as a result they've been successful. Um, now it's time for us to do a mini case study together and it's all to do with virtual training. Now, um, so what I would like for you to think about is if you were designing a virtual training um, course, such as something today, which was maybe even more immersive and, and really use technology to another level, how can we use the elements of this course to create a new type of training course, which is potentially leveraging virtual reality technology? What ideas do you have? I'll let you have a, a think about that and put the answers in the chat box. So some of the things that um, I've been thinking about as part of the research that I'm, I've been doing is that when I look at a course like how I'm delivering today is how can I use VR technology? So if I was to take one of the, the products that are available on the market and um, almost create an auditorium experience. So um, one of our clients wants to become a public speaker. So um, because they're based in another com country, um, I'm looking at how I can leverage VR technology to mimic them being in an auditorium so that they can really see what that experience is going to be like. Because in an auditorium, the acoustics are different. The sheer scale of um, the room would be very different. And here I can actually leverage technology to, to help in that experience. So I'm just going to have a look at um, the chat. A VR to create a virtual group setting. So it feels that we are actually attending the session in person amazing uh, use it to do group exercises in a virtual space and simulation as well wonderful um i, I really i'll quickly share an experience that i had with um, a team a few weeks ago um before um lockdown we would often go to escape rooms we would maybe go to an escape room a month and obviously that's not allowed right now so um, many companies have started to leverage technology and um, we really wanted to mimic that same experience and we were able to do that so we did um, a live virtual escape room where we were all in the same room together and solving the various um, problems and um, the quizzes and the tasks um, as a team and that was an amazing experience so that's how far we can take the technology to help us mimic those experiences. So what have we got here? DAF, create a project control room with interactive graphs and dials. People would have avatars um, to crowd around different parts of the room. Excellent. That sounds like a great idea um, as well. And, um, and it could be that we get little team activities and we work as a team to, to solve a specific problem and then come back together in a group as well. So amazing. Thanks so for your insights and inputs there. Really, really great feedback there. Um, so at the start of today's session, um, I talked about the fact that fostering a culture of creativity and innovation is something which will be an enabler for organizations to have that culture, to have that mindset and to really um, create that change um, in the core of the culture of a company. So um, let's explore that in a little bit more detail. Um, before we go any further, um, a couple of questions for you. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, to what extent is your organisational setting suitable for creativity and innovation? 
feel free to share your answers. One being low and 10 being high. We've got a nine, we've got five. So we've got a mixed bag here. We've got three to four. OK, so um, again, it very much de de depends on the organisation, the appetite for creativity as well, um, and also um, the maturity of an organisation. So we've got five depends because I'm freelance. It's easier to get less innov innovative work. OK, cool. OK, so um, thanks for sharing that. So we've got quite a few different um, answers there. And um, so there's a mix, there's a broad spectrum and, and that, that's expected within um, different parts of the world and in, within different um, organisations as well. Uh, what things do you think are important to foster creativity and innovation? Please share your answers. We've all already got Shah. Shah can take the answer you've given, which is it depends on the team and managers. So um, the the individuals who are part of um, and the team and the organization play play a role as well. So what other ideas can you think about? Please feel free to share your answers. And um, um, it could be things like, have we got the right um, messaging? Are we sharing the right messaging um, to the individuals in the organization? Are we encouraging um, that kind of way of thinking? So we've got um, Sharon, uh, what have we got here? Willingness to accept getting it wrong, organizational strategy, open-minded management, leadership, trust, openness. We've got the attitude. Um, um, what else have we got? Confidence to speak up, absolutely. Um, enlightened management. Um, depends if project is being run like a traditional manufacturing or like um, Drucker's information work. Important, um, encourage learning, reading, immerse in technology companies. Then we've got diversity and inclusion culture as well. Okay, wonderful. Thanks, guys. Really, really good answers and all really important um, elements when it comes to organizations driving that new way of thinking and, and being as well. So what are some of the things that organizations can do? So um, first of all, it's about... Um, changing the use of the language. We talked about culture earlier and um, it's moving away from words and a belief system of I can't do this or that won't work or we've tried that already and replacing it with something positive. So if anyone was on Ben's growth mindset session, he talked a lot about how a growth mindset is more about learning, growing and um, taking those steps and embracing a challenge or a scenario or a situation. So it's changing the language that we use. Um, by changing that language, we can actually change the culture and the energy of, of an organization. Um, provide staff with the challenge to encourage creativity. So rather than giving the answers to other people in your organization, it could be let them go away and find the answer themselves. So um, if they're working on something and they need to think about it or they need more time to really explore the options, give them that opportunity to do that and provide the right physical setting. So I've touched upon that earlier in this session. And while we're not all in the physical office, then how do we leverage that technology as well? Um, encourage reward and reward innovation. So very much about um, praising people for their ideas and the things that they've created. Um, have the right mix of team members. So earlier in the chat, someone talked about that. It's about teams coming together and really having that communication. So of course, it's about bringing those people together. It's about challenging assumptions. And um, challenging assumptions isn't about saying to someone you're wrong, that what you're saying doesn't make sense. It's about asking them those questions in a way which allows them to think, to explore and think outside of the box. Um, having clear goals, reviewing what didn't work. And um, so reviewing what didn't work is moves away from that blame game and that blame culture. It's more about, okay, what didn't work? And let's look at those reasons. How can we change that in the next iteration? How can we take those lessons from um, the work that we've done to improve it, how we do it next time? Um, and then the other, um, there's a method, Edward de Bona's thinking hats method. And again, the, the link 
techniques um, have that information available. And it's the thinking hats method is about different people wearing different hats and each hat represents a different role. And then everyone takes turns to wear a different hat so that they can look at the perspective of whether it's a customer or a manager or, or a supplier or even the creative person. And what that enables us to do is to think differently and to have different perspectives as well. So that's what organizations can do. And then when it comes to us as individuals, what are some of the things that we can actually start to do and start to think about? And um, this is spending time reflecting, thinking and being. It's really allowing the mind to wonder. Um, and what some of the studies and research shows is that when we have that space and when we're uh, allowed and we are enable ourselves to um, allow the mind to wonder, then those ideas can happen. We can go into flow and a flow is about being immersed in something so much that we forget where the time went or we forget to have lunch because we're so um, in flow with the things that we're doing. And it's about shifting the focus um, and thinking um, of things from a new perspective, going back to that growth mindset as, as well. Um, it's about avoiding negative sentiment about a situation. And as we talked about earlier, it's about being solution focused and um, more forward looking in how we can deal with various challenges and scenarios. It's again about challenging assumptions. It's about being prepared to make mistakes. If we go into something or a scenario or we look at really successful people, often that successful person went through a number of failures before they before they got there. Not everything worked the first time around. So um, that goes hand in hand with an organization really being open to innovation and accepting that there may be challenges and the individual being willing to um, take that risk as well. Um, and then learning from those experiences and then learning continuously. So um, continuing to evolve and come up with new, new ideas. And then the final thing is about um, moving away from where something is a thought. I've got a really great idea. I've got a really great idea that's amazing. So what am I going to do about it? So it's moving away from thinking to doing. Um, as a coach, when I work with clients, a lot of the things that um, I work with clients on is, so you have this desire, you have this goal or something you want to achieve. Um, until you do something about it, it remains a dream. So then through coaching, it's very much about making them accountable. It's very much about them telling me what action steps they are going to take to get to that end goal. So it's moving from a thinking mindset to a doing mindset. Um, so those are some of the things that we can do as individuals. I'm just going to go to the chat um, and please feel free to um, provide, ask any questions um, as we come to the end of today's session. Um, so clarity of process, know what you need to do by when, what's expected for each step of the process. OK, so we're talking about fuzzy rules, project uh, finding processes hold people back exactly so going back to the things that organizations can do um, they can really start to look at the things that hold innovation and creativity back and then how they can move forward from that as well um, also need to change terminology teach people to fail fast okay good really good things there um, so as we start to come to the end of today's session um, are there any other questions or anything people would like to ask please feel free to share in the chat box. Um, I'll give you a few moments to do that. Otherwise, I'll hand back over to Emma. Okay, so I would love to, I would like to thank you for your time today and for being part of um, the series of sessions. It's been a wonderful experience. And if anyone does have any questions or they would like to know more about the courses that we run at Skill Up, then please free, feel free to reach out um, uh, to uh, Ben or I on LinkedIn. And um, I believe the session is being recorded and um, Emma can provide more details on that as well. Um, so Emma, I'm gonna hand back over to you and um, take it from there.
Great, Monica, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to have you. Thank you for wrapping up this series for us. Um, yeah, so this session was recorded. It will be made to watch on demand. So I'll share the link in the chat now um, so everyone has that. And um, yeah, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day and hope to see you all at the next reactor session. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone.